Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher. Welcome back to my machine shop. You can see the bridge board in the background. And I've got a little maintenance to do on it. I just finished up a video of this project. It's a little nutcracker, arbor press, whatever you want to call it. So if you can take any more <laughs> videos on rack and pinions, there's one coming up. If not, skip over it. Well, during the last year or so, I've been annoyed when I change collets or tooling in the bridge board. So there's something wrong with that key in there. So I've just cleaned up the machine, the whole basement. It was a mess down here after uh, milling a lot of aluminum on that little press. So now that it's clean, and before you do any maintenance job, clean up. Uh, because I'm going to drop some screws, and I guarantee you, if you drop any screws or parts in the chips, you're never going to find them, especially the small parts. So it's a good practice to clean up real well and turn off the electricity if you're working near the moving parts. That's just the only way to go. All right, let's get started. I'll show you what the problem is and what I'm going to do. As you know, every R8 collet or tool holder or shank or whatever it is that you put into the bridge board has a keyway in it. And in the keyway, of course, fits a little key, but in the spindle nose here, what Bridgeport calls it is a collet aligning screw. But I, I'm going to call it a key because that's really what it is. But there is a problem with the one on this machine, and sometimes I can't get the collet in. It appears to me from feeling up there that the little key has rotated a little bit. And, you know, it just becomes a stop, and then I reach in there and I'm able to turn it. But sometimes it takes me a long time, so I'm very hesitant to change collets. I, I tried to do everything in that last project with a three-quarter collet because I became so frustrated. So I want to replace that or repair it. I do not have repair parts on hand, but I know you can get them from H&W, this little key. And I know you can get them on eBay. So... Let's take this apart. I have done this many years ago at the high school. This is not the bridge port from the high school where I labored so hard for the master. This came from Joliet Township High School, which is about an hour's drive from here. So I'm going to, I've already turned off the power. I'm going to lower the quill a little bit. And the first thing I need to do is to remove this nose piece. It may be easier to do this job if you tilt the head at 90 degrees so you can look straight in there rather than up from the bottom or through a mirror or whatever. But as you know, I would rather take a severe whipping, beating, lashing than to tilt my head and then have to uh, realign it, uh, tram it, if you will. Yes, this is me. I would much prefer this and then to be doused with salt water than to tilt the head on the bridge port. As you can see in the dirty mirror, there are two holes here for a spanner wrench. So you need to have a spanner wrench like this or make one. Whatever you do, just do not be a punch and, sh and hammer man and hammer it out. But that probably would do the job, and you're going to see probably a lot of these that are mangled because of Bubba. I have two spanner wrenches. This is a Williams. This is an Armstrong. They're both marked size 2 inch. There's a part number on them too. Notice that this one has two different sizes on the end there and would work fine. But I'm going to use this one. And you can see that Bubba already had his way with this some time ago, grinding off a bit, breaking it off both sides. You know, he's pretty thorough, but I think this is going to work. Before you take off the nose piece, you have to loosen up or even take out the set screw that's on the back side of the quill. This is toward the column now. And it's probably okay just to back it off and leave it in there, and that takes an eighth inch hex key. Note the witness mark. That may not be necessary, but I sometimes do that, but I'll probably end up wiping it off by accident. Anyway, the spanner is in the holes. Now, from the looks of those holes, this probably has never been apart. So I'm going to 
yank on it and it isn't budging but then again I'm not very strong I'm going to have to use the lead hammer which makes me hesitant but that did break it loose and off it comes I'm gonna lay a nice clean rag under what I'm doing here in a minute and it will be dirty I'm sure yeah it looks filthy well that must be a fine thread it is a very fine thread, isn't it? Filthy dirty, that will be cleaned up off of a camera. And this again is called the nose piece. Yeah, you can see how perfect those holes are. So it's never been repaired. I would say never been apart. You need two tools. One is a ball eighth inch hex key and this is a regular hex key that I cut off on the one end which I think is going to come in handy and can be cut off with your Dremel but using the round nose the ball end now I'm going to take out there's two screws now this may not be true of all bridge ports there you know there's different models this particular one was made in the 60s but look here is a set screw and it's got a hole all the way through it and I don't know this for sure but I don't think the purpose of this is so that we can get through the one and at the other I think that when they made these that uh, really the only way you can get a little this is a lock lock screw is what it is the only way you can get one that short in a hex uh, set screw is to cut one off and then, and then the hole goes all the way through. I hope this is well lit enough so you can see it but the key is of course toward me toward the camera and now we got another screw you you can't get in there with a regular Allen wrench it's got to be a Bondus ball end and we'll see if that comes out and this is a fine thread from yeah it's coming fat fingers in the way and there it is now I'm gonna zoom in and give you a close-up and we'll examine it and see what's wrong with it if anything I hope you all watched my video of the wonderful little model Bridgeport made by James a lot of people watched it so check it out but I was just wondering this is so precision and everything moves do you suppose that James put a tiny little key into the spindle? I wouldn't doubt it, but if he did, it can't be any more than one millimeter in diameter. Okay, this is a Bridgeport manual, but it is not the one that came with this machine. This one is dated 1976. But anyway, there is the part, 139S, but it does not show that other little lock uh, screw. It just shows the one screw. That, of course, is the spindle nose, and the other part there is the nose piece. There it is with the pencil mark on it, part J-139-S, call it a lining screw. Notice that there's only one screw listed. Well, I just came from my computer upstairs, and I looked up these parts on eBay and that H&W company, which is quite good. And it's 8 or $9 for this piece, plus postage of, you know, 3 or 4 bucks, whatever. So, looking at mine, but you can see mine is flat to fit into that key. And it's buggered up. It's damaged, probably from somebody forcing a collet up into it. So I'm going to dress this one up with a needle file and reuse it. And what I think happened is, you know, that outer little lock screw was fairly loose. It should have been tight up against this. So I think this had rotated a little bit. 
I think you all know what a dog point set screw is. These are dog point set screws, but of course they're in the wrong size. And would the dog point end be the right size? I do not know. You're not going to find these at Walmart, but uh, you can also make one by putting, well, here's, here's a quarter 20, quarter 28. I said quarter 20. No, this is quarter 28, National Fine. If you have a clone, it's probably going to be metric, but that could be turned down or ground, but it would have to be the right length. There's only enough room in there for these two little screws, I believe, and that's why this one is so blame short. But anyway, my fix is going to be to repair this and put it back together. Otherwise, I'd have to wait a couple days anyway for a new one and spend 10 or $12, and you know how cheap I am. And what I failed to tell you, it's, just, it's not just $8 or $10 plus postage. You need to buy three of them because you're going to lose one or two, and that way you've got to spare. So the parts are going to cost you $30 or $40 by the time you get them here. So this is how it fits in the keyway. Just a nice fit. Get in there. Like that. But as I told you, this one was rotated a little bit, so it, it wouldn't get into the keyway. So if I repair this and then get it locked in there correctly and firmly, I believe it's going to work just fine. And these are hardened. So, with the screw held in my little hand vise and a needle file, I will go to work and dress this up, which won't be too big of a job. This is a brief history of the Bridgeport Machine Company. There will be a still of this at the end of the video where you can pause your video and read it. Okay, it's about 145 thousandths across the flats and the slot, the key slot, the keyway in a collet is about 155. So there's a little bit of a play there which will be good. Make sure that you're keyway is not chewed up. Now one other point I want to make before I go any further. Men far more learned and smart than me have suggested in the past that you don't need a key in there at all. Just tighten up your collet or your tool holder as tight as you, you can get it and it's not going to go anywhere. And there might be some truth to that but visualize the torque on a larger drill bit like this such as a one inch that uh, it really would want to twist and slip and then possibly could tear up the inside of the spindle. You, you do not want to chance that. Alright, let's put the screw in place and I am using a genuine Bondus 8th inch ball end hex key because there is you have to come in at an angle is what the problem is here. You, you can't come straight in. Alright, that went in fairly easily. Okay, I got it started, but I do not want to run it all the way in yet. I've got to put the collet into place and line up the keyway with the screw. I'm probably giving you too much detail, but I have put the screw in far enough to where I can feel it with my index finger. Also, I can feel the orientation of it, such that I can get the collet in. So I know that it's in the keyway right now. And is it tight enough? 
It feels like it's just about right. Now if you're using the other kind of set screw that's just a, a, a round one, you can bring your tension in at this point on it. But here I want to make sure it's in deep enough so that when I take a deep cut, it's not going to damage the collets. Do you remember earlier in this video when I told you that as I took this apart that this set screw here, this lock screw, was not all that tight? And I believe that was the root problem of my entire uh, situation here. So now I want to put this in and make sure that I lock that screw so that it cannot rotate. And you may or may not be using a lock screw like this, but I'll tell you right now, this cannot be installed with a ball <laughs> hex key. It's just a struggler. Or maybe it can, but that is why I specifically cut off this one so I can get up in there and also put quite a bit of, of torque on it. Notice that I have a collet installed now. Now that's going to be a struggle to get in there and it's going to start better from one side than the other because remember they have cut this off. I believe at the factory they cut off a regular set screw to form that. Well let me give it a try with you watching but generally it takes several tries to get that thread started. Huh, I just proved myself wrong. It went right in. You know, you get to be a skeptic when you're an old man because you have struggled <laughs> with a lot of situations over a long period of time. Now it can be brought in tight against the other screw with this. But I, I want to make sure it's really in there tight. So now I'm using the stubby. Now I will back the drawbar out just a little bit and make sure that I can, yep, and it feels like there's plenty sticking out. And off camera I'm going to try several of the other collets here because I've got all different brands. I have cleaned up the nose piece very well and also under here. There was an awful lot of grit along here, but I wanted to show you this on the thread. That at the factory, they had drilled a hole for that set screw on the back of the spindle to ride in. But obviously, this has been apart before, even though I said maybe it hadn't, because someone put the set screw right into the thread. So I would like to line up that set screw with the dimple here. So I'm going to see if I can do that. So once I get it screwed in there by hand, I'm going to get back there, take that screw all the way out and l either look in there with a flashlight or feel around in there with a probe to line it up rather than worry about the original witness marks that I had on here. This one of course had rubbed off. With my shaving mirror mounted behind, I'm going to zoom in and remember I just took the set screw out, there it is in my fingers, and I'm using this as a probe and rotating this nose piece now, I can feel that dimple. And when I feel it, this is really kind of finger loose. That is, I don't think I'll even have to use the spanner. I hope I haven't belabored this video too much, but I've made a 15 minute video out of a 5 minute job. And I can feel that, that it did go in. And I'll tighten it down a little bit more with this. And I believe the job is just about done. Someone once told me that this nose piece should not be all that tight. So I don't know if that's the truth or not. 
put it down in the comments, you know, if you have an opinion on that. But as far as I'm concerned, this job is done. And now it's going to be so much easier for me to change collets. So I won't have to stick to that three-quarter inch collet. <laughs> All right. Also notice that I had a nice clean rag here, so if I dropped one of those set screws, it probably wouldn't bounce around too much. Matter of fact, I must confess, I did drop it once off camera, and it did stay on the pink rag. So that completes the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you, because I'm sure that a lot of people have had the same problem. This is Mr. Pete, Tubal Cain, saying so long for now, and I'll see you next time. Stay just one minute after class now for extra credit so you can read the history of the Bridgeport Company.